On last week's episode, the project took on a life of its own and grew to enormous proportions. Today, we go back to the start to see what really happened. Kinetic Sculptures I've wanted to do something like this for a while. There's so many different kinds. I'll link to these three below. Now let's get started. Even though we're starting small, I still wanted it to be life-size. So I found the smallest pterosaur I could. Nemicoloteris. But is Nemicoloteris even real? Some say it's just a juvenile of an unknown species. I want to make this out of paper, but I don't know how to do that. So I started with clay. The head's pretty simple. I could do that with one fold. The body has a round surface. We can lay it out flat by cutting a seam into it. That's the idea behind this shape. When it's laid flat, it leaves a gap. The tail end gets bent down the middle, but not creased. Down on the neck, there's a series of rectangles that get folded into a 3D triangle. Now that I have a working design, I took a picture and traced over it on my iPad. Now we have a template. You can download this right now for free. And your favorite color of cardstock. Time to cut. I'm using a glue stick to temporarily hold the pattern in place. While I was at it, I turned the template into an SVG file. So we can use the laser. It even has fold lines. Before we fold, I'm going to score the paper with a dull object, such as the sculpting tool. This will give a clean line and prevent the surface from tearing. I purchased a glue specifically for paper. It dries quickly and has a super fine precision tip. I also tried these glue pens, which work just fine. These triangles get folded into sort of a pyramid shape. This will support the body and the head pieces. I just noticed a problem. Why is there white paper showing? Ha! Ah! Oh my gosh. Oh, that explains it. Apparently this paper has a white core. You can also tell by doing a quick check on the sides of the paper stack. There's that white core. I decided to set it aside and start painting a new blue version. With a blue core, of course. All done. Now I'm going to use a second sheet for the underbelly. This one gets cut instead of folded. I'm also going to add an incision where the rods will attach via these figure eight connectors. They just need one extra bend. Now we can glue both sides together with the connectors sandwiched in between. I'm not gluing the center panel down yet because I haven't bent the wires yet, but if you already have, you can glue it on now. Okay, now for the body. This tab and two each get a dab of glue. That goes on the top here. And these two tips get glued to the side of the triangle. The bottom layer of the neck bends up and then down to match the body piece. 
Now we have a nice sturdy base to attach the head. I also brought in some blue to the face. Now for the crankshaft. On my first prototype mechanism, I used aluminum and steel wire. For the final version, I'm going to use brass rods, because they're stiffer and super straight, but you can use pretty much any wire. The armature wire was a little too soft, but it does work and it's easy to bend. All of the wires I have can be bent by hand but a pair of pliers will give you clean and precise bends. Like those. Break out the rods, okay, let's go. Wire bent. The C and A bends, as I've designated them, remain straight, while the B bends need to be bent out at their own angle. Like this. There's those B bends. Next up, I'm bending four eyes. Here you really will need pliers. They should look about this size. Not too big, not too small. There are four of those, each with a triangle at the bottom. The center rod is a bit different. It's got a bend in the middle for a diving animation, and I folded the top piece like a paper clip so it can get glued flat against the body. The rods at Hobby Lobby turned out to be too short for the crankshaft, so I extended them with a dowel. I'm gonna make the base super easily with cardboard and hot glue. At the end of the video, I'll make a better base out of wood. Now we can twist our eyes open and slip them onto the rings. Slip. Now to attach it. Back on the prototype, I used masking tape and zip ties. For this one, I'm going for a cleaner look with cardstock. I glued the paper in half, and then rolled it up. This was a little tricky, but it did work. You might be able to come up with a better method. One more important piece here. This holds the center rod upright, otherwise it would collapse. Speaking of the center rod, this goes up here. It's actually easier to do this earlier in the project, so you can press it flat against your work surface. You don't have to use a sculpting tool though. Okay, we have the model. You may need to tweak it to get the animation to look right. These two bends can affect how much longer the middle rod is, causing the bird to sit too high. These angles can be tricky as well. Feel free to adjust them. Just make sure you keep it all symmetrical. This would have been a good place to stop, but I didn't stop. I didn't even slow down. I completely redesigned it into a kit. I made a new wooden A-frame stand found some small glue pens, and everything slots together with the same glue. You can even stain it with just watered down acrylic paint. I used two strips of masking tape to let the glue dry. I wanted to make it tool free, so I pre-bent a bunch of rods. I even experimented with a bending machine, which mostly works, but can't do the small bends in the center so it doesn't really make it easier. I thought rolling the paper tube was a little too finicky, so I designed some 3D printed clips that snap into place. So you can focus on painting. Thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. 